wrestling we just did Nogi was what the hell happens when they can grab stuff. Not a lot changes, but enough changes as we're going to spend this week focusing on that. And then the following week, we're going to be focused on competition prep. So a lot of drilling, your top stuff, a lot of working on what we need to be ready for competition. But what we're going to focus on today is the basic grips that guys are going to use to focus on in that initial kind of white belt, blue belt era of your jiu-jitsu, right? So when I'm here, a lot of guys are going to reach grab this collar. So I'm going to grab their collar, which is then going to allow them to grab either my elbow or my tricep here, here right? If you've been to a jiu-jitsu tournament, how many have seen the white belt dance that starts right about here, right? It all goes here and then everyone holds on real tight. Just hold, right? No. So a couple things we can do as far as setting ourselves up for success, even when people have grips and then break grips. So first one we're going to work on is just called an ankle kick off a grip break. So Austin grabs my grip here. Most guys are doing the standard collar grip here, right? They're grabbing two to four fingers in, thumb wrapped or not, doesn't matter. All we're going to do, guys, is I'm going to grab right at the fatty part of his thumb. Here. And when I pull, I'm not pulling down and I'm not pulling away. I'm kind of rolling my hand just like I want, like a high five, right? Like to that type of position. So when I'm here, I'm here. As we're doing that, I'm going to drop step and I'm going to grab his collar and pull it down and over his front foot. So we're here, we're pushing into each other, right? All these things are happening. All I'm going to do is step back, pull, and here. See how that pushes a lot of his weight over that front foot? All we're going to do is reach down, pick his, pick his ankle up as I throw his chest forward. Here, here. All right. You can hit this no gi from the collar tie position, but I like it quite a bit in the gi because a lot of people get in this real like stompy position, especially at white belt. You get real tense here and everyone gets real stompy. So I go here, here, and I drop step and pull. Here. See how it puts all the weight there? Drive them down and over that, that foot. All right. The benefit of this is I am benefiting from grips, but not relying on because I can hit this nogi as well. Because if we're in here, and I'm here, and he, I can still drop step here, hit that just as well. But the benefit is I have that grip, which just gives me a little bit better leverage and a little bit more room for work. Questions on this? Super complicated first time most of you have ever seen it. There's no questions. It's fucking wild. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Um, in terms of your grip and then to what angle you're picking, does it matter what side grip you have or can you just pull and push? So, you're always going cross by. So if I have this grip, I am picking with my left hand. If I have left-handed grip, I am picking with my right to what is his left. Right. Okay. So I'm going cross body with whatever it, from the hand I have. So, here. If you have like a same side grip though, would you want to readjust that before you have one grip? Realistically, this one's pretty easy to hit both handed and I don't want you guys practicing it, but if you need to switch your grips, a very simple way to get there is if he's grabbed here, we're both here, I can reset and then I can establish my grip first. What you guys will realize about grip fighting, especially earlier in your career, people are going to grab something they're going to fucking commit to it. I watched one white belt tournament and I'm not, I wish I was lying. The guys gripped so hard and started doing this to the point where Austin left his feet. It was the wildest thing I've seen. The dude literally just like swung and kept spinning until the dude's feet came off and he like tripped him. It was the dumbest thing I'd ever seen. Um, when you separate the handbrake, are you going to post your forehead, the hand that's still on the grip out to keep him from pushing in as hard? So I'm here, I'm dragging him with this. So when I'm here, it's a, I'm showing it as steps. A lot of this is happening concurrently. I am breaking, stepping, and pulling all at the same time. Here, here, here. Pushing across the neck. So if those kind of three motions are happening at the same time, then the driving across, picking up the ankle happens at the same time. All right. Questions on that? 
Yeah, I'm changing levels on this. So if I'm here, a lot of guys want to set up grips here on the edge of the position to build, just like when we were in Nogi. I'm here. Bop. You can drop to a knee if you're flexing, if you're bending, you can just hit that low squat and drive across. Other questions? Are you pushing or to pull? So, pull, as soon as you hit that ankle, push. Other questions on this? Are you pulling with both hands? Like this sleeve too? Oh, no, I'm breaking with what would be the sleeve. So I'm here. I'm here. I'm breaking at this. So I don't have control. Of it. Okay. This hand then hits an ankle, so it's pull, push. So this is hitting ankle. I'm pulling, pushing here. Other questions? Drill her out. One, two. So I'm here with Austin. We're grip fighting, things like that. And let's just say I'm not confident in being able to hit that initial grip break, right? Because some guy, it, Corey is my favorite example of this. When Corey establishes a grip on your degree, congrats, it's there. It's there until he decides he's done with it, not when you try to break that grip. I've rolled with the man for the better part of a decade. It does not matter what I do. That grip is established, it's over, right? So if he gets, if let's say Austin is that type of guy, he's built different, right? I don't really like that. So now we're gonna work on, okay, how can I use this grip to my advantage? I will sometimes hang out right under that tricep. Sometimes I'll hang out here, it just depends on what I wanna do. But one of my favorite things to do when guys start to really get grip heavy here and fight in with me, all I'm going to do is, the hand that they have their grip on, I'm going to feed in for an underhook and step in to grab their belt. But the foot motion here, guys, is going to feel weird, and this is purely judo. So wrestlers, fight the instinct to hit the over-under throw here. I'm showing this in a different way because this works better in the pajamas. And I get it. You're going to have to fight it. It sucks. Sorry. Deal with it. So I'm here. We're moving around. All I'm going to do is I'm going to step that foot, my outside foot in here. As this foot comes in, my heels are gonna touch and I'm gonna squat. So I'm here, here. Yeah, you're gone, just five. <laughs> this is gonna get real bad real fast for you. So I'm here. So we're moving around, right? I step in, in, and squat. Cause the goal is to set the top of my belt on his belt tie. So the top of my belt should be just under his belt tie. Right? As I'm going, I'm looking to grab the belt if it's there, if not, pants. If you don't like grips, just reach for the hips, right? So as I'm here, I lift up, and I want to load him on the low of my back. See how Austin's perfectly balanced here? That's how I want him. Perfectly balanced. Now, I'm trying to hit him with the world in front of my feet. That's the best way I can describe this. So when I come down, I'm getting this control. I want him to land in front of me, and I should land somewhere in the side. The hardest part of this to get will be that foot motion. So it's here, here, and squat. That motion is what we're going to drill first. Then we're going to start adding the throw. Yes. They land on the head. Is it your fault or their fault? Yes, you have to control the throw. So, the only time them landing on the head is their fault is in a submission attempt. I.e. Vanderlei Silva, Rampage, or who, who do you fucking Carter have? Rona. Carter Arona, where he powerbombed him. That's Ricardo Arona's fault for hanging on to the triangle, not Rampage's fault. Alright, so I'm here. And most guys, like I said, you'll get into this grip battle, you'll get moving around. I, I can't get the broke, can't get it broke, okay. Boom, I'm gonna, all I'm gonna do is pop him up just that little bit. Here, step and in. As I lift up, he comes on over my hip. Then I'm trying to set him, depending on how much I like him, aggressively in front of me, and fall on top. But how I want this to get drilled, for technique purposes and to get it right. Five step-ins to one throw. So I'm here, 
we're in this grip, we're moving around, I step in, one, I lift, back out. We're moving around, I pop him up that little bit, step, step, lift, back out. Five, once I get that fifth one in, I lift, here, slowly toss your friends, break fall if you're Mr. Sears, land inside control. Are you aware of your surroundings? Aware of the 20 other people we have here on the mat today? Questions? Five seconds. Speak one, speak up, two, clear. <laughs> I said, where is the uh, handle? So, like, when you have the other hand around the So, this hand? Okay, a couple options where this hand can be. Some people like to have this grip. Personally, I'm a big fan of this grip, or if I'm a fan of no-gi grips, I'm overhooking. We're practicing in the pajamas, so set yourself up with one of these two to start. Two reasons people like this. The armbar option out of this, is nice and I have more pull. Where this, I have a little bit more control of this upper body. So you know what you're yeah, I'm holding this grip until I decide it's over. So if I land here, the reason people like this grip is the Mighty Mouse arm bar. Right? I can sit into that side control arm. I prefer the under grip because I have more leverage and I can pull his center of gravity through his chest if I need to. So if I'm here, I don't feel like I have as much pull to get him moving, right? Like he can pull that arm back. Where if I'm here and he's got a real, you know, kind of hard grip right here, here, get that arm back. And guys, when I say you're trying to hit him with the world, I 100% mean that. All right? When you hit this in competition, the goal is to bounce him off that mat and off the world. All right. And if the rest like, oh, that's a slam, I will argue to the grave if you hit it right. If they land on their neck, that's on you. <laughs> but if they land right, I will argue to the grave that you were right. And I've won most of those. Alright. Questions on this? Like I said, five in to one throw. Alright. Be kind of committed to his collar grip, right? I don't appreciate this. And let's say I'm not really trying to play a heavy grip game, which was me up until about purple belt. I don't care about your grips or my grips. I'm just doing no gi. It just happens to be the gym. I will say that was my jujitsu game right up until about really mid purple when I had to start instructing more. I had to figure out grips. So he, let's say he commits to this grip. All I'm going to do is grab right underneath here. And the aim of this, I believe, is politically incorrect. Here. You're, my, you're my leftist in the group right now. All right. So this was called the Jack Wizard. Longest time you're wrestling. It's real tough. I know. It's from a bygone era, but we're here, right? So I'm here. I'm going to grab right at the wrist here with my first grip. My second grip, I'm reaching right kind of as the armpit connects to his sleeve. I'm hitting that same hip step in, and I'm trying to basically sling a bag of potatoes onto the wrist. So I'm here, we're moving, I'm trying to get this break, it's not working. I'm here, here. Or if I want the grip, I'm here. My feet step in, I take him up, and you throw. Alright. Come here, big boy. I was gonna throw a play just because he's light. <laughs> but when I'm here and here, I'm trying to step in, throw. world lands right in front of you and you can either step into the arm bar or step into side bar. But yes. Actually, uh, uh, do you mind if you're like you care at all like with going down the knee? I've seen this where you can get in there and then you go down to your knee. Like, you can. Here's the problem with
with dropping to the knee. Because I've seen that. And in judo competition, not bad. The problem is in jits. Because in judo, the whole point is stay off your back. Jiu Jitsu guys don't give a shit about that. So if I'm here, he sets the grip. Let's say I go here, right? I've seen guys who can backpack. And I just don't like that. Is it the worst thing ever? No. If you need to hit it that way the first couple times you get it, great. But initially you want to be truly throwing. Yeah. I, I learned it as a chapter wizard, which I realize is probably super culturally insensitive. I apologize for whatever people who may be offended by that, yada, yada, yada. Y'all know my heart. Here. Here. Step in. And up. Just like last time, five to one. Make sure we're being aware of our surroundings. The feet kind of go with it. Questions on this? One more time? Yeah, I can throw it. So I'm here, he grips, we're moving around. I'm trying to break this grip. Okay, here, here. Step in. Finish. Alright. Questions, comments, concerns? No technical difference between one and two. Okay. So if I'm here and I drop to one, he can still backpack. <laughs> Whether it's one or two, I don't hear what I'm saying on this. I do not hate dropping to both knees if you're more efficient that way. Or if there's like a, I just don't feel comfortable strong in there. I think it is probably 20 to 30% more effective if you can get it from your feet. Does that make sense? Alright, drill her out. One, two, three! Right. The hardest throw we hit. I'm just kidding. This is completely being holy guard. And I just wanted to freak Austin out for a second. So, let's say Austin has just that killer B, just I can't let go of this grip, right? All I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to fake like I'm going for that ankle fake. So I'm here, boom, I'm going to pull and come here. But instead of going for the ankle pick, I'm going to slide this shin into his arm pick. Now here. As we fall, I'm going to rotate, bringing my outside leg up, here, extend, arm bar. So I'm here. Austin's got a grip. I don't appreciate that. I like to transition from under the arm to the wrist on this one. So I'll be here, hold the hand fight, I don't like that. I'm going to change levels like I'm going here. Up and in. Once you get here, extend, force me. Simple, not easy. Questions on it. So we're here. All we're doing, he's got this grip. I transition to the knee up here. This leg is trying to get foot behind his back, chin in his armpit. This foot swings wide and looks for the arm. So it looks like I'm just pulling though, which is what you want to look for. Here, instead of just pulling, because I don't like pulling guard. I will be blatantly honest. I hate calling you guys pulling guard. But if you pull guard while attacking, I hate you less. All you can ask for from me. In competition, what are the rules like this for pulling guard? So, it varies by competition. At worst, it's an advantage. So, like, if I pull, it's advantage him. But if I get a close arm bar, that's advantage me. But if he then passes to side control, well, you have to have contact. Yeah. So most tournaments, you have to be a main contact. So you can't just be like sitting. You have to have actually touched each other. Like a lot of tournaments, you'll see guys that'll go out and do this. Daniel's fucking terrible. Okay, don't talk about 
He's not here. He's not here. I'll make fun of him. I'll send him the video. Um, so we're here. But most tournaments, the second you make that initial, our hands touch. You can sit at that point. The big thing is, I want to sit and attack. Because a lot of people, especially at white and blue belt, are real lazy at the start of their matches. They're like, oh, la di da di da, this be cool, right? All right, we'll grab. And it's like, whoop! By the way, I'll more bar you. Enjoy that. Thanks. <laughs> All right. And that's why I like this one. It's quick and efficient. Any other questions on it? So we're here. I transition to the wrist grip. I either fake that shot or act like I'm pulling. This shin goes up. Swings around. Break the wrist, walk away. Unless I'm flying, which you have to have a lot of confidence in the guy you're facing to catch you. Unless you're flying going full crossbody snap. Here's why. So to go full flying, this arm, this shin has to up to that arm. So, so when I come here and I go up, that is when I can go into that same. But Flying arm bars are the greatest way I've seen people knock themselves out in a jiu-jitsu tournament. And when I say he knocked himself out, it was painfully funny. I laughed for five straight minutes. I did not care if he was on top. This kid's from Michigan. So I'm here. So when I'm here, the big difference between flying and not is the jump. So being able to jump. The reason I prefer to sit is it's also easier to speak. You went up here and I sit right. I will show and find and hook that ankle so that I can sweep on. That's why I prefer that. If you're ballsy enough to fly and you trust your partner, you can give it a shot, but I don't recommend it. 